Stay with us here on World Inside with me, Tian Wei. Still to come on our program. Two world-renowned Chinese sci-fi writers tell us what sets apart the Chinese imagination in weaving science fiction. Really? Those interviews coming right up. Welcome back. You're still watching World Inside with me, Tian Wei. The program is coming to you live on CGTN. Science fiction is not only about stretching our imagination of the universe, but also often a tale of the triumph of human spirit. In China, massive social changes in the last generation are a rich material for writers. One of them is Hao Jingfang, the author of the science fiction novelette Folding Beijing, and the winner of the prestigious Hugo Award. It's about the struggle of a father trying to send his daughter to school in futuristic Beijing, a point of reference to the current difficulties of many Chinese parents to ensure their children receive high-quality education. Hao earned a special honor, becoming the first Chinese woman to win a Hugo Award for Best Novelette for the year 2016. She shared with me her excitement about the success of the first uh, Chinese sci-fi blockbuster, The Wandering Earth, and what does it mean for a sci-fi writer like her? Actually, I did not imagine, even myself did not imagine, that um, we can do such a movie in such a short period of time, because we know that these kind of a hardcore sci-fi movie is a big uh, project uh, need a uh, uh, movie industry but the Chinese movie industry is not that mature uh, especially in these technical parts so I special effects and things yeah so I myself uh, think that perhaps this kind of movie should come out uh, 10 years later. Maybe we can, we should start from some uh, small investment project and uh, gradually uh -huh. come to this one. But, oh wow, amazing. This I, is a great leap forward, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, a great leap forward. I was so excited. To me, the story, of course, transcends, but it's not the best story that you've seen in a movie, right? Mm -hmm. Even for a China-made movie. Mm -hmm. And yet the special effects are really beyond. Yes. And I understand most of it actually is done by domestic companies or mm -hmm. joint ventures, special effects. Um, that's amazing. So technically, China can be there. Yeah. Actually, I knew some of those guys uh, attending this movie. Uh, they all have some experiences working abroad, but they come back for the uh, Chinese movie industry. Mm -hmm. So they now raise their own companies with all their experiences and knowledges mm -hmm. they, they, they gained from abroad. And now they contribute to Chinese movie industry. Mm -hmm. So this uh, makes me feel that uh, the Chinese movie industry really has a lot of hope. What is it to you? I mean, as a very renowned and respected sci-fi writer, um, science fiction writer, to see that it was actually a movie that made all of you onto the scene, in a way, become the hot topic of the society. These are good news for us uh, science fiction writers, because when we, uh, we used to write for only the small circle right. audiences, but uh, nowadays we have the chance to face the common audiences. Mm. If our works can turn into the movies, into the big theater, then we can have uh, more uh, readers and audiences. Right. However, I know that um, uh, Liu Cixin is special. Uh, he has the huge imagination of the universe, of the humankind. It's really uh, a grand imagination. My works are not very similar as his, but uh, his works is really an uh, encouragement to mm. us. We, in the future, I think we can be more imaginative. I remember talking to you several times earlier for an exclusive interview, and you were helping me to understand why you wrote it the science fiction in the way you did because mm -hmm. one could argue many of the stories you told in Folding Beijing uh, actually 
is more about different levels of the society coexisting in one mega city. It does not necessarily have to be a science fiction. <laughs> and it is actually touching on so many different topics. So to you, will those kinds of science fiction be able to also catch the soul of the audience? I just want to say that I respect different uh, styles of art because in literature it's a uh, art of language. Yes. You need to maximize the uh, art of language. You, you need just go with the flow. Yeah, and you, you need to write uh, a lot about the mind in heart because with, uh, to, to describe the mind in one's heart you need language and you only can do with language. But for a movie, you need the plot, you need story, you need actions. So in, in a movie, people require action by action, mm -hmm. a lot of dialogues, action, scenes. I respect all this. You need to maximize the art of action. Yes. You, you need to let the people have, uh, raise their emotions uh, through all these kind of actions. Yeah. So in this adaption of uh, the story, I told the director that uh, you can add a lot of story into it. You, you need to add more actions, mm -hmm. you need to add the plot. Da Liu, Big Liu also did that with The Wandering Earth, mm -hmm, hasn't mm -hmm. he? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. sure. Because in his original story, he just described all the history yes. yeah, in a very long distance. Uh, yeah, but in, in this movie, he put, uh, no, actually the, the director put attention to the uh, human hero, t to the really specific mm -hmm. uh, individuals. The timing is very important. Yeah. Uh, many wonder when was the United States, uh, these sci-fi movies takes off in the 1960s. country. 1960s. Exactly. That's when the country's economic and the science and technology are developing in yeah. such a fast speed and the society transforming. People yeah. are asking about who they are and yeah. who they want to be, right? Mm -hmm. And it's, some say it's very similar in today's China. Do you feel it that way? Yeah, I, I do feel that way because uh, if you don't feel the technology around you, then you, if you just see a movie with a lot of technology, you find, oh, it's very far away. Yeah, it's good, but you, you yeah. will not be touched by it. But if you feel that, oh, the world is changing. Uh, we and I need to catch up. Yeah, yeah. and uh, the, the society is moving, and we have a lot of advanced technologies. Every year we have something new, and uh, what's the next era? If, when people are excited by this technology, development and people are eager to see new things coming out mm -hmm. and then the emotions of the society uh, is ready for these kinds right. of works. But what about geopolitics? I mean if you look at today's world there are two things that really attract people's attention. One is technology, how it's transforming all of us and the other is geopolitics which is quite a relatively a new topic in a way, uh, and that involves China as well. So as a science fiction writer, when you are looking at the world changing and people talk about China's changing and how China is looking in their eyes changing and how China's technology is, is comparing to the others and how uh, geopolitics coming in a way uh, to play a role in how technologies are being transformed or shared, what do you make of that? Actually, I think that in science fiction world, we really have the sense of the human. When you are part of uh, the human, uh, you, then you face the space, you face the future, you face the technology. We are together. We are all humans. But in real life, we do, don't think, oh, I'm a human. We do just think that, oh, I'm a Chinese, he's American, he's English, he is a Spanish. Mm -hmm. So we think that, oh, we are so different. But in science fiction world, we are really all humans. So we feel the uh, united uh, emotion, I think only in science fiction world. Mm. Some say Jing Fang is amazing because she managed to do so many things all at the same time. I mean, not only writing science fiction and also working on movies and now you're also operating a platform 
in which you can bring science fiction and science with education here in China. Mm -hmm. How did you manage to do all of this? <laughs> Actually, I see all these works are uh, creative works. In now my educational pro project, I write uh, courses for the young kids. I hope to give them some imaginary world. Mm -hmm. So we are creating an imaginary uh, school uh, high above in the sky. Mm -hmm. Our school is like uh, floating in the sky. I hope that uh, in our school, in our courses, mm -hmm. the, the young kids uh, will see oh, a whole huge imaginary mm -hmm. world. In this world, they can just uh, uh, go to explore the world, the universe. In this school, they can just uh, uh, get into the imaginative world and uh, they can learn a lot of the uh, knowledge about the whole world, mm -hmm. about the human, about universe. Hao Jingfang, Hugo Award Science Fiction Writer. Stay with us here on World Inside with me, Tian Wei. Still to come on our program, can science fiction transcend borders? I asked a Chinese science fiction writer, well known also for translating English sci-fi works for Chinese readers. That interview after this break. This is a clip of a TV drama adopted from Journey to the West, one of the four great classical novels of Chinese literature. Some say it's the earliest form of ancient Chinese science fiction. It's so different from the next clip you're going to watch from a Hollywood blockbuster. They sent us a message that they can take whatever they want. But we will send them a message that this... Besides the special effects, certainly you can tell there are other differences between these two very different ways of telling science fiction.